name is, uh, is Phil Clear. Um, I am the head of the senior school here at uh, Dulwich College, Yangon. Uh, we are at the moment in the Star City campus, but we have another campus over in Pun Line. I've been here for nearly two years, so this is the end of my second year. It's been rather a strange uh, end to my second year, as it's been rather a strange end to uh, everyone's academic year. Um, but uh, it's been, a, it's been a, a fascinating, fascinating journey so far and particularly interesting over the last uh, few weeks and last couple of months. My background in terms of teaching has largely been with the older students, um, the, uh, the, the senior students, but my immediate experience um, was with prep school students. So that was with students who were aged um, kind of 10 to 13 years old in my previous school. So, Dulwich College Yangon has actually been growing very nicely. Uh, when I arrived, the oldest year group was, was year eight, sorry, year nine. Uh, then this year is, uh, it's year 10. Next year, we'll be growing through to year 11. And uh, then the year after, we will be starting our sixth form programme. We'll be doing the, uh, the IB diploma. Um, that's what we're, we're planning for here the year after next. So uh, I've got a, a wide range of experiences. Um, and uh, it fits, fits well with what we're doing here at, uh, at Dulwich Yangon. Itself, as you're probably aware, um, we're attached to the school in, in London that's uh, just had its 400th uh, anniversary. And uh, we've got schools all over Asia, um, largely in China. Uh, and the oldest school there is uh, over 15 years old. Well, obviously, COVID-19 has affected uh, Dulwich as, as it's affected every aspect of, of, of the world, really. Um, but we were lucky, uh, as I said earlier, we, we, we've, got, uh, we've got other schools, Dulwich has got other schools in, in China. So it would be fair to say that we kind of, we, we saw it coming. Um, and we were, we were lucky because all the hard work that they'd done in those China schools, we were able to, to leverage and take the ideas and the best practice from the China schools to ensure that we were, we were well prepared. And uh, so we closed on the 17th of March and we opened our online learning provision um, pretty rapidly afterwards on the, uh, on the 23rd of, of, of March. So it meant we were able to move pretty, pretty seamlessly from uh, being physically in the classroom, um, working with the students uh, in, an, in an ordinary offline way um, to, the, to the online version. So as I say, part of the advantage of having the China schools meant that we could take their best practice. Uh, but also we'd started working on various different types of, of online platform um, this year. So we've been using Microsoft Teams, um, we've been using Seesaw, both of which are things that um, the students are familiar with um, in, an offline, in an offline capacity as well. To get used to it, we were very lucky in the senior school in particular um, that we started this year with the students bringing their own devices. So the students already took computers, um, tablets and so on into their lessons. So it became part of their learning. So actually to transfer the learning from what we were doing in class to transferring their learning to, 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 to the home situation wasn't too difficult. Um, and in fact, it, uh, it's, it, it's, proved, it's proved, proved successful. It's proved successful. Um, as much, you know, as much as is possible. There are certain things that we simply can't replicate. Um, you know, the students can't, can't get out into the swimming pool. Um, you know, they can't get out into the playing fields or, or, or use the gym. Um, but what we're doing is we, although we can't change the environment that they're in, the home environment that they're in, we're getting them to look at it in a, in a different way. Um, we're getting them to see it in, in, in a different way. Um, the, the teachers are asking them um, to, to, to view it through a slightly different lens. Um, we've had examples of um, students actually interviewing their parents or grandparents so that, that this is an opportunity to actually embrace the technology. So it's something they probably wouldn't ordinarily have done, but they're actually um, finding out about what life was like 50 years ago. So I've seen some lovely videos of our students um, talking to their grandparents, finding out about what the climate was like, finding out what, the, what, the, uh, what school was like, what the markets were like, how things have changed in the last 50 years. Um, so it's actually making the most of um, our, our media, social, social, social media, um, and, uh, and, and, and the ability to interview 
people is something that we probably wouldn't necessarily have done had we stayed working in the normal physical um, kind of environment. I think, the, I think the toughest part really has been retaining a sense of identity and a sense of community. Um, the wonderful thing about working in a school is you are, you're working with hundreds of different people every day. Um, I remember I worked in an office job very briefly when I was back in, back in London and I think it was six months before I got to speak to anyone outside the office to talk to a client. But, but uh, yeah, part of the attraction of, of, of being a teacher, um, working in education, is you, get to, you get to see and interact with hundreds of clients, if you like, every day, whether it's, whether it's students, whether it's colleagues, whether it's parents. Um, so to, to maintain that sense of, of community has been, has been difficult. Um, in the senior school, we've carried on with uh, weekly assemblies. So everyone comes in and they, they, join, a, they join a call um, once a week uh, and we'll share things that, that are going particularly well. Students that have done, done very well, who are working well. Um, we, we're carrying on with our house competitions. Um, so here at uh, Dulwich College Yangon, we've got um, four houses, uh, a, bit like, a bit like Harry Potter. Um, but the students, you know, when they do good pieces of work, they get house points. We have competitions. We've had a football competition. We've had an art competition. We've had a public speaking competition. So although the students are not physically seeing each other, um, they are sharing the nice things that they're doing um, and they are um, adding to a sort of sense of purpose and a sense of community on a regular basis. But no, I would say that yeah, the hardest thing has been not physically being in the same place um, because yeah, teaching teaching's all about building relationships. Um, relationships with the, with the students, relationships with, uh, with colleagues and relationships with, uh, with parents as well. But I think it's, it's very, very exciting the fact that we've got um, the whole of the world has, has had to think and reappraise how we communicate. Um, so it's not just education, but I think education um, will be changing probably more than many other industries. Um, Cambridge University, as you're possibly aware, has just, uh, has just announced that they're going to be doing all of their lectures for next academic year online. Um, and that's just showing possibly the way things are going to go. I think our, our students are in, a, they're in an exciting position to be able to uh, embrace the online learning um, because I think online learning and online collaboration is something that we're only going to see more of. Um, and having the chance to do that now at uh, Dulwich College Yangon, um, it, 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 gives, it gives them you know, a real advantage. And I think we were, we were chatting earlier, I know, about the fact that there, there could be a bit of a polarisation, um, particularly in this country, with those students, who, uh, those students and young people who do have access to technology and those who don't. Um, we went to a, a, an orphanage over the weekend who we support and of the 60 students there, I think there were two mobile phones and one, one computer. So it, it does concern me that although there will be sectors of, the, of society that will be um, ploughing on and making great progress, um, engaging in, um, in the online world, there could be more and more groups, more and more people in society COVID-19 has done is it's forced everyone to look um, at the most efficient ways of, of working. So whether that is business in general or, or ed education in, in particular, um, there are efficiencies that, if you like, online collaboration is, is bringing to us. Um, I have, as I said right at the beginning, we've got, we've got, two, um, we've got two campuses. I've got a team on the, the Punline campus and a team at the Star City campus and actually organising an opportunity for us to meet physically is incredibly different, difficult. Um, you know, we're on different sides of the city, um, only separated by 20 or 30 kilometres. Um, now that we've actually got people on different parts of the world, we've got some colleagues in, in, in the US, we've got some colleagues in, in the UK, some in Thailand, some in the Philippines, some here still in Yangon, but actually it's much easier for, for us all to get together um, for a meeting. Um, and actually they're a really, really effective way of students organizing their, their notes for staff to organize their lessons. Um, and it means that we've actually got a record of all the lessons that have been taking place because in fact, we've got um, all, the, all, the, um, uh, all the lessons actually get recorded 
there. Um, and so it means that uh, students are able to go back and have a look to see if there was an explanation that they, they didn't understand, something that they missed, they can go and see um, how it was explained. Um, and a, a number of students have actually commented that this has been a really positive feature. You know, when you're teaching, it, it, it's very ephemeral, it passes very quickly. So if you didn't get the explanation first time round, then you've missed it. You can put your hand up and ask again, but you can't go back in an hour or a day or a week and say, I, I can't remember how to do simultaneous equations. But actually, we've now got a platform set up so that, that the students can, can find out um, how explanations took, took place. So it's all about taking the best parts of the online learning, holding on to them, and then you know, enjoying, and we will enjoy it, enjoying um, the physical presence of the students, of the staff and the parents when we can all get back together, you know, and doing all the wonderful things that we do here or we would expect to do here in a normal, in a normal school environment. I think six months ago, people would have probably balked at the idea of primary school students, or secondary school students, um, communicating with, with, with students on the other side of the world. But actually the reality is now, we know that so many um, collaboration problems, um, collaboration projects, you know, such as finding um, a, a vaccine for COVID, you know, those, all those projects are international projects and they, re they rely on the collaboration of teams and groups, not just from one classroom, or one university, but actually groups from all around, all around the world. So actually building the collaboration um, are the are skills that we're, we're, we're developing um, for the students here at uh, uh, Dulwich Yangon. And they are skills that they will build on and they will use going forwards uh, in any aspect of life, business, education, or whatever.